those of you, who, unlike me, who are fluent in multiple languages, <laughs> people who are really good will say, well, they, they can actually think in different languages. And then presumably, if your thoughts are being broadcast through the ether, you, you, you could potentially be broadcasting in different languages. You know, which raises the situation, what would happen in a room like this, where we were all sort of broadcasting our thoughts, would you then just be receiving a cacophony of thoughts in different languages from different people, or would you have some ability to filter those things out? Well, would you be bro be bro ugh, excuse me? Would you be would you be broadcasting all of your thoughts all the time though? Would it be the, the situation where I would see these three hundred people and be hearing everything all the time, or would people be able to shut off their their antenna effectively? I, I can I can certainly say what you would hope would be the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's possible. <laughs> I think. <laughs> no. uh, the, the idea is that if it's like an electromagnetic signal, there are different uh, vibrations, so it's possible to di um, give a direction. We have a different kind of possibility to... to uh, yeah. you, could, you could push in on your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> How do you see the concept of descent with modification coming along had Henslow actually taken the voyage? Had uh, his wife sort of not been quite the shrew that she turned into. Yeah. Or, or she'd been well, careful the words you use. <laughs> if she'd been happy to be free of her oppressive Victorian husband, and there you go. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, I think, th and this is, I mean, this is a slightly boring way to finish a what if event. Um, the, the, the fact of the matter is, I don't think the theory would have suffered at all. Um, I'm going to, I deliberately printed this out before coming out here. I'm going to read you a quotation. Um, Those who cavalierly reject the theory of evolution as not adequately supported by facts seem quite to forget that their own theory is supported by no facts at all. <laughs> like the majority of men who are born to a given belief, they demand the most rigorous proof of any adverse belief, uh, but assume that theirs needs none. Now that's a great statement. Uh, from uh, clearly an evolutionist. Any guesses when that statement was made? Come on! <laughs> 1905, I'll take that. Wrong. Um, <laughs> yes! Um, uh, 1852, Herbert Spencer. So that was a statement made uh, seven years before the publication of The Origin of Species. These ideas, not so much natural selection, that truly was the contribution of, of Wallace and um, Darwin, um, but the idea of transmutation of species chains, of a genealogical process, um, they were out there. And Charles Darwin's own grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, had written, and this is a message to us all, actually, if you're going to express something scientifically, write it as epic verse. He wrote these... <laughs> wonderful sort of doggerly poems in which he described the very process of descent with modification. So I hate to say it, that whether it was Henslow or someone else, or that poor old Fitzroy just had his own lonely old voyage, this idea would have out within the next 30 or 40 years. The idea has come up that neuroscience is the modern equivalent of phrenology. I don't think I said equivalent. Well, <laughs> the modern analog of phrenology. That's where phrenology would be, you know, if it had proper tools or, you know, something like that. Yes. No so problem. now, what about the wireless internet being the modern equivalent of communicating through ether? <laughs> well, there's an interesting convergence. Again, back to the movie references. You know, my Minority Report uh, <laughs> is, is one where some of these concepts get linked together, where you're, you could be walking through a building, and there are com com computer technologies that are detecting your thoughts, your preferences, and they're, they're records of your past behavior, and then tailor everything that you see on the basis for that. And again, you know, how, how far off are these sorts of technologies? You'll, you'll, futurists will say that they're quite close at hand. And so there will be an ability, you know, what would be involved in walking through a doorway and having that doorway perform functional neuro neuroimaging on your brain, that's not possible now, but I don't think it's inconceivable. And so what sorts of things could people learn about you through non-invasive imaging and then link it up to an interconnected uh, environment? There are all sorts of possibilities. Uh, I say more. I, I think that... Um, uh, 
space-time general relativity or something, the creation of particles, subparticles from energy is a kind of a research that was in the paradigm of the ether. But I think that the approach to the material would be very different if uh, um, now we use the um, technology to obtain something that uh, the people at the time thought that was possible only with the body, only with uh, oh, the soul, maybe. So it's very different, the approach to <coughs> use something or to uh, mm, go through himself to find the possibility of communication. So uh, this is a very big difference. I uh, we've talked about ether being analogous to the force. And we've also talked about phrenology maybe maybe showing people's underlying moral reasoning. Have we discovered tonight why it is that Darth Vader wears a helmet? <laughs> uh, you can go, but I really want to finish on this. <laughs> is, is it in episode five that you get the brief glimpse of the back of his head without the helmet? That, that explains why he wears it. Damn it. <laughs> exactly. You see, his head was warped by it, and it's just there. I think it's a cosmetic thing, but clearly the rational, moral side has been damaged, and, and that is why he is evil. And you beat me to that. <laughs> so a comment, um, trying to put some of these together around how different professions might shift in status. It seems like if the ether is now a... Um, uh, enables telepathy, then spiritual mediums would probably become extremely important to society, maybe the most important. And if phrenology is correct, that the spiritual part of the head is at the top, then you could spot the best mediums by those who look sort of like rhinoceroses. So one of the questions would be, who would have more power in society, the people who could detect the people with spiritual power or the people who had the spiritual power themselves. And you can imagine there'd be conflict between those two groups. And sort of related to that, somebody actually asked me in the break, uh, what would happen to everyone's jobs if these scenarios actually came to life? And of course, for us, we're academics, okay? We just generate sort of hot air anyway. Well, we happen to have chosen our particular subject. So um, we'd just be academics in these different fields. It'd be the, basically the same story. We'd be, we'd be describing different truths, but uh, we'd still be at it. I don't know about the comedians. <laughs> we don't really have a job to begin with, so that's... <laughs> We would look, leave, uh, live like kings and you would all fear us. <laughs> Lest we use our mind powers to craft jokes that would cut you so deep inside you would cry. <laughs> and walk with shame as your visage elongates, your tears and your outward persona wrecked inside. I can't, succinct. succinct. I'm sorry, I'm trying to, be like, trying to be like a professor up here. We, we still would not have no job, so we would be completely unaffected as well. So. If any of you had the ability to go back and create one of these like alternate realities, would you do it? Maybe we should all go down the line on it. So uh, talking with Andrew, it seems like all of these realities are sort of uh, circular ways of getting to the same reality that we already exist in. So it's, it's sort of like the Terminator. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So no matter what we do, guys, John Connor's still gonna go out and fight the machines. Skynet's gonna happen. Uh, it's hopeless. So absolutely. What? Well, no, I'd go back and I'd i I'd, I'd talk to Father Darwin and say, look, this boy's problem. Just get him into a church quickly, okay? Um, no big or nothing would happen. And then all the credit, all the credit, which is so tragically not attributed to Wallace, would be attributed to him. Uh, phrenology would certainly make many people's lives much easier. The life of a psychiatrist, you know, who spends their time desperately trying to craft diagnoses out of the unreliable utterances of their patients would be totally transformed. A patient would come in, you'd feel their heads, you would know what's going on. But that still, I think, would be a miserable world for me. I think it would be far more fun if the spirituality or the ether were around, because that would open up a whole new realm of possibilities for human interaction. 
Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, the Hitler would permit a very simple understanding of the world. I think that everybody uh, will feel it's a kind of romantic. <laughs> will feel more linked to the other because we are all uh, unified by this kind of uh, element. And we, if the matter is a part, it's a kind of movement of the Hitler, we will be very, very linked, uh, not only with the um, possibility of mind or uh, thinking uh, communication, but also be feeling, uh, feeling uh, the emotions of the other person. So it will be a very different world, I think. I, I, this, this, this will make you happy. I would go back and I would hang out with Wallace. <laughs> and here's what I'd do. Why? Why? I would, I would talk to Wallace and I would give him some of this inside information and I'd help him out because the guy sweated it out for a very long time and he needs to come into his own and have success. And I would also give him $5 and I'd, hel I'd tell him to invest that $5 for about 150 years and I'd, I'd tell him to make explicit directions and a letter and have it come to, uh, let's say, April 20th, 2012 with where I can get this $5 and its return. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that would be really, really big money. And with that, I would buy a robotic suit and bring back Tesla, <laughs> who I could tame as my pet. So there we go. It all comes together. Can, can you all now please join me in thanking the talented people up here for a great evening.